disagreeing. Keyshawn Johnson's right there. Dan Orlovsky here. You saw Marcus Spears and Adam Schefter. Let's get right to it and get your popcorn ready for this one, week 11. We've got the Chiefs and the Raiders on Sunday night. And remember, Vegas handed Kansas City its only blemish in 2020 back in week five. Remember the Raiders defense got after Patrick Mahomes, pressuring him 29 times. That's tied for the most QB pressures in any single game so far in 2020. Offensively, Derek Carr went four of five with two touchdowns on passes, 25 yards downfield. Carr 6 of 18 with one TD on such passes in all other games this year. But FPI gives the Chiefs an edge Sunday with a 76% chance to win. The Raiders haven't swept the Chiefs in the regular season since 2012. Marcus, we always talk about stopping this Chiefs offense, but you think the key to win is on the other side of the ball. Why? Yeah, you don't stop this Chiefs offense. That's the reality, Els. You have to outscore them. You have to mm. outdo them with explosive plays. And look, in the first meeting with the Las Vegas Raiders, the Raiders hit seven plays of 20 plus more yards, and three of three or four of them went for touchdowns. That's how you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. You take advantage of Spagnola and the Blitz and one on one with Ruggs, who's a burner. You find those matchups with Waller on the second level to tight end and you make him you make guys make one-on-one plays and that's what the success was for the Las Vegas Raiders and John Gruden listen for all intents and purposes the Kansas City Chiefs scored 32 points didn't play bad went into halftime with a lead so the 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 resilience of this this Las Vegas offense with John Gruden continuing to mash the gas and score points and then at the end of the game be able to milk the clock and not get a ball back to Patrick Mahomes. That's what you have to do, offensively be explosive. You're right, Marcus. you got to push the football down the field, and you know this as well as anybody, Dan, having been on the offensive side of the ball playing quarterback. The game plan is not going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. You beat them the first time around with the game plan. Why would you change it? Yes, you have different wrinkles in there, some plays that you've seen other opponents hit against them. You'll add to that list. But for the most part, John Gruden's going to run the football. He's going to dink and dunk when he needs to, and he's going to take his shot downfield with Henry Ruggs as well as Aguilar, as well as the tight end Waller. That's what you do. You're not going to all of a sudden decide that, okay, well, this is what we're going to do because they know what we did to them last week. It yeah. doesn't work like that in the National Football League. Yeah, the Chiefs are the one team in the NFL that there is a very specific formula on how to beat them. One, you got to be explosive on offense. You have to do that. That's what Marcus talked about with those seven plus 20-yard plays. Number two, you've got to minimize their possessions. This is great because the Raiders are the best third-down team offensively in the NFL. They had 36 minutes of time of possession the first time they played, so that matters. But then you also have to force that offense to kind of hit singles. There's such a home run hitting offense and that's what really changed in the first game in the first game the Chiefs scored 24 points in the first half they had two dozen on them because they played a ton of man coverage the Raiders did early on and that happened Mahomes was like all right here comes this gut session and then in the second half they started to change a little bit up they didn't let him do stuff like this where he got out of the pocket and went to kind of attack your defense they played zone they got her after him in the rush they didn't commit till he got past the line of scrimmage the defensive line fell back when he decided to move and then they doubled Kelsey in certain situations Max Crosby's got to have a big game where he makes his rush and then spins yeah. back so as much as I love Marcus it's He's not just hey you got to outscore him like it this this is a complete picture to beat the defending Super Bowl champions you've got to do that checklist if you watch that game the Raiders did all three. Can they do it again is the big question Sunday night. And, Marcus, you said there was one play in that previous matchup between these two teams that swung the entire game in the Raiders' favor. Yeah, it was, there was a scramble with Patrick Mahomes on third and 20. All right? And this is what he does. And the, the Kansas City Chiefs usually make this play. This is just mm. a drop by the tight end, which could have which ended up in a touchdown and more than likely would have for this Kansas City Chiefs team. So the, these are the type of things. Look, Dan, Key, and I, we all make great points about how you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. The reality is you need a little help from them as well. <laughs> like, that's how good this football team is. Like, you need them to have a mistake. You need Patrick Mahomes to throw in the triple coverage and Jeff Heath pick the ball off. You need those type of plays in order to beat this team, and more so to keep them from being on schedule. They had to go to throwing the football because the, Ra the Raiders were being explosive and couldn't use Elaire out of the backfield. Yeah, and one thing that's important to remember, too, is that uh, Andy Reid 
Ravens teams always strong off the bye week. In fact, he's 18-3 and three mm. coming off the bye in his career. Adam, the Raiders put seven more players in the COVID-19 reserve list to yesterday. Uh, what's the latest on this today? Well, Lord, they'll remain there, and as long as they test negative, they'll be activated and eligible to play in Sunday's night game. But you see the names right there. A slew of defensive players. Jonathan Abraham, obviously, Abram, obviously, Jonathan Hankins, some key players, Lamarcus Joyner, Cleveland Farrell. So they've got a lot of players out there that may not be able to play on Sunday night. They are not the only team in the league dealing with this. Tim McManus, the ESPN reporter, reported today that the Eagles wide receiver, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, tested positive. A couple of other Eagles wide receivers in close contact as well. This is something that's going on right now with every team in the league.